In this video, we'll leave Houston behind in a cloud of Saharan dust and make our way 120 miles northeast to Martin Dyes Jr. State Park. The flashing lights of a patrol car and the billowing flags served as a preamble to the 4th of July festivities ahead of us. But a mere 30 minutes out of town and my tummy started rumbling. Not for the golden arches hovering high in the sky, but for the lower flying, winged wonder of a Whataburger. Unfortunately, my tummy would have to wait. Pit stops are a bit tricky with our home rambling along behind us. The further we drove, the denser the forest became. Until only a strip of highway cut through the dense piney woods. But like a mirage, the trees gave way and a lake appeared, the man-made B.A. Steinhagen Lake to be precise. Impounded in 1951 and controlled by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, this lake provides flood control, hydropower, and a water source. But the recreation offered by the reservoir was our priority for the weekend. The ominous sounding Martin Dyes Jr. seems like a fitting name for 705 swampy acres of state park brimming with things that slither, sting, bite, and snap. But the airy name rests mundanely with an East Texas senator who simply supported the park's development. The state park has three separate areas connected by Highway 190. The Cherokee unit is for day use and has a boat launch, paddling trail, and fishing areas. The Walnut Ridge unit is an overnight area with an old wooden observation bridge. Park headquarters is located at the Hen House Ridge unit and where we're camping for the weekend at Site 305. Although this is a pull-through site, the roots of the large trees did make it a bit uneven and we had to use our leveling blocks. I picked this site because of the direct access to the slough for canoeing. We never actually put in here during our stay, but being so close to the swamp was fantastic. I didn't even see our new site buddy. Check out this huge garden spider. Although a thing of nightmares, they are relatively harmless and eat insects including mosquitoes. My heroes. But my phone wouldn't focus, so I took a portrait instead of the big girl and her boyfriend, who she might just eat later. Before we headed out on a trail, I took a pee and a peek at the restroom. Getting to the toilets involves an intricate dance with the stall doors, and the showers are small and old but clean and hot. And this has to be the best mural I've ever seen on the back of a restroom door. No such mural in the men's restroom. Sorry guys. We braved the bugs and went for a bike ride before the sun went down. The two and a quarter mile slough trail begins and ends off the main park road right by our campsite. This awesome trail crosses 16 wooden bridges to explore the swampy wetlands. As the trail meanders through a wild thicket of trees, vines, and underbrush, I had to carefully maneuver my blue bike to avoid the worst of the roots and almost ate it once. Same with Russ, but for a totally different reason. You'll see. spider on your freaking handlebar on this side yeah i just see him uh i'd put it on the ground and stomp on him or or shove him away let me get the heck out of here oh my god we gotta go though because there's mosquitoes <gasps> 
<laughs> Garden spiders are harmless, unless they scare you to death. I was glad to be back at the trailer with some walls between me and the outdoors for the night. The next morning we headed out early, but not too early. Usually the park rents canoes and kayaks, but coronavirus kept them dry docked. We took our canoe off the truck and found a stowaway clinging to the seat, ready for a ride. We parked at the Walnut Slough Day Use Area and spent over two hours exploring 4.3 miles of the Walnut Ridge and Neches Paddling Trails. The concrete boat ramp provided a rough, but non-muddy access point, with a view of the observation bridge. I still had the heebie-jeebies from the spiders yesterday, so I feared that going under this low bridge would play out like the opening cave scene in Indiana Jones. The one where the guy gets all the spiders on his back? Yeah, that would not be good in a canoe in alligator-infested waters. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Ooh. More waspy than spidery. As we left the cypress swamp for more open waters, the birds came out. Here is a cardinal hanging out with a red-headed woodpecker, also nicknamed a flying checkerboard. And this little warbler flashed in and out of view like the bright light of a firefly. We followed a great egret along the shoreline until he finally got fed up with our shenanigans and flew off for good. Yikes. The paddling trail is marked at decision points with buoys but the water hyacinth makes following the trail a bit more challenging. Are we just gonna go straight through? Native to South America, this beautiful and annoying aquatic plant grows in dense, sprawling mats that float along the water's surface and can double every two weeks, thus causing problems for boaters and hydropower production. Native to North America, the fragrant bloom of the American Lotus is one of the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen and totally worth the paddle on the Neches Trail. This little guy acted like a buoy and made sure that we made it back to the Walnut Trail. After sitting for so long in the canoe, we decided to take a walk along the island trail, simply called Nature Trail on the sign. The island trail has lots of tranquil spots to reflect and relax in nature. but I was evidently in the mood to cross more bridges, even if I had to make my own. <gasps> Luckily, I landed on solid ground yeah, so and only hurt my ego. The mosquitoes came out in mass to escort us back across the real bridge. It was their lunchtime too. The afternoon grew hot and lots of people cooled off in the shallow waters of Steinhagen Lake, but someday only the alligators will swim as silt fills the lake and it becomes a swamp. We stayed cool by watching movies in the trailer with the AC cranking, 
But then the storms rolled in. Untethered hyacinth islands floated along the slough like a bunch of Roombas on a mission to clean a mansion corridor. When the storms cleared, wildlife, including us, ventured back out into the cool evening. Through the foggy steam of the lake, a gator appeared in my time lapse. Look closely. He'll start at the circle and follow the arrow. The next morning, foggy, but not too foggy, we headed out to the Cherokee Unit Paddling Trail. We launched the canoe from the boat dock on the north side of Highway 190. We were very tempted to stray from the paddling trail and cross 190 under the metal bridge we drove over earlier in this video, but we decided to stick to the trail and go under the plain old concrete bridge instead. And we were sure glad we did, because if you cross below the metal bridge, there's no access to the paddling trail on the south side. We paddled into the cove the map recommended launching from and saw some folks fishing from the shore and something else fishing from the water. Don't worry, we kept our distance. As we neared the West Bridge to pass back under Highway 190, the water hyacinth closed in around us. And this looks like where the paddling trail is going to end. We are not going to make it to that bridge over there. Back at our campsite, we tried to catch the big one. It got away, of course. We had a good time, even though the fishing was kind of crappie. Once the sun went down, we celebrated America's birthday in true RV style. Like and subscribe if you thought this video was great. Huzzah!